Is the 2015 15-inch MacBook Pro still a good buy in 2020? That is our topic of conversation today. All right, let's get into it. talk about the conclusion up front so you can skip to that if that's all you care about then I will talk about why and who it makes sense for then I'll talk about what's a good deal today and where to look for them and number four I'll talk a little bit about summarizing the pros and cons of the computer itself all right if you don't need all the bells and whistles of the latest technologies like for example USB-C then I think the MacBook Pro makes a lot of sense and it is a great, great deal to buy in 2020 because of the low cost due to depreciation. And then in terms of performance, a 2015 MacBook Pro isn't very different from a 2020 MacBook Pro today if you are not a power user where you're looking to edit videos pretty intensively or doing some sort of hardcore gaming. If you're just looking to use it for regular homework, for some light programming, and looking for maybe some editing on the side, then I think the 2015 MacBook Pro is going to be a great, great deal and snap it up anytime that you can on eBay or Amazon. So why did I buy the 2015 MacBook Pro? My use cases are, number one, I write. So I write on Medium quite a bit and I mostly use Google Docs for writing those documents. And in those cases, I don't need a computer that's extremely powerful. I just need it to have a, the ability to browse the internet and allows me to write articles and has a good keyboard. Number two, I use it for writing code occasionally. So I'm a software engineer by profession, but I have a work laptop that is extremely powerful and I use that for the majority of my work. For anything that I do on the side, I still need something at home where I can log on and do a little bit of site projects or some light programming just to tinker around with things. So I need something that is able to handle some sort of light programming work. Number three, I use it for editing videos. Like this YouTube video, for example, is edited on the 2015 MacBook Pro. In terms of workflow, I need to use Final Cut Pro. And from my understanding on learning so far, Final Cut Pro has been optimized perfectly for Mac laptops and I swear by Apple computers. Number four, I travel from time to time. So I need to have that flexibility of plugging into a workstation right here anytime I'm working from home and also just pick it up and go whenever I need to. Now I don't do any sort of hardcore gaming or 4K editing. So that has helped me identify which are the laptops that are going to best fit my needs. Now I have a lot of different peripherals like a DSLR with an SD card and I have some older devices that are still using USB for example and I definitely appreciate more ports and I don't want to buy those hubs where you have to kind of plug it in and shove things in there. Now let's talk about the price range. For me, I personally didn't want to spend that much on a computer. I think in the past few years, at least from 2015 and, and beyond, all the laptops from Apple at least have been very similar in terms of performance with only very incremental performance improvements. In terms of price, I was looking for something that, is, that fits within my budget and doesn't break the bank. In my opinion, the MacBook Pros from 2014 and beyond have been pretty much the same with maybe incremental improvements on each new release. What is great about the 2015 MacBook Pro? Now, I have a lot, a lot of good things to say about this MacBook Pro. For one, it is extremely modern and it's very, very performant for the price that you pay. 
So I paid about $750 on eBay for a great mint condition 15 inch MacBook Pro. And I think you can find something fairly similar on eBay anytime today or even go on Craigslist for maybe a little bit cheaper. Now, for the price that you pay, the 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro is a great, great deal. The first thing I really like is the keyboard. The Apple MacBook Pros from 2016 and beyond have had some weird issues with their butterfly keyboards. So I won't go into detail why it's a big problem, but just know that a lot of people have had issues with butterfly keyboards. So if possible, try to avoid the MacBook Pros from 2016 to 2018. In 2019, the 16 inch MacBook Pro was released and I believe it has a new keyboard now that is way, way better than the butterfly keyboards. So the 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro also has a great selection of ports for anything that you might need. If you need an HDMI, it's got it. If you need USB, it's got it as well. If you need lightning port, it's got that as well. And it also has a very, very handy SD card slot. So if you're shooting on like a Canon DSLR like I am right now, you'll be able to slot it in just very, very easily without having to use a port. The performance on the 2015 15 inch model is absolutely amazing. Think about this, with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage that is blazingly fast for today's standards, there's nothing really to complain about the laptop. And you can also get the upgraded model with a dedicated graphics card, which is going to enable you to power a monitor like this one in the background up to 4K. If you had bought the integrated graphics card model, the problem with that is your computer is going to feel a little bit more sluggish when it's doing anything that is graphics intensive like video editing or powering an external monitor. Now you might be thinking, is the 2015 model still a good idea today because of support issues, because of how old it is, and because of how many newer laptops there are in the market today that are going to offer better performance, more selection of ports, better support in the future? If that is your consideration, then yes, I'm going to admit the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro is an amazing beast of a laptop. However, it is also $2,500. Now that's not $2,500 I'm willing to spend. I'm more, I'm just using this for more casual off the side, side projects kind of deal. So I'm not looking to spend $2,500. If I were relying on a laptop to make money, then yes, it makes a lot of sense because I'm investing into making my workflow then yes, it would make a lot of sense because I'm investing into my business and I can write that off as a business expense. However, for this, I'm just using on the side for making videos time to time, so I don't need something that expensive and that performant. Now, of course, there are downsides with the laptop as well. The first thing is that support for the computer. If you bought the computer today, most of the Apple Care warranty for the laptop would have expired already. What does that mean for you as a consumer? Well, there are multiple different providers that can sell you a warranty. You can buy that through eBay or buy a refurbished laptop through a certified dealer on eBay. That's what I did. So the laptop itself that I bought on eBay comes with a one year warranty that basically covers everything on the laptop. Before I bought it, they had already replaced the battery, the keyboard, and the display as well. So I'm basically getting a brand new laptop for a secondhand use price with a one year warranty. That's a no brainer in my opinion. The second thing here is that Apple might not choose to offer new operating systems for older laptops. And the reason there could be because they want to encourage you to upgrade to the latest and greatest so that it can make a little bit more money off of you. Now, that's a risk I'm willing to take because I think the current OS version would probably still last me for the next three to five years. Now, three to five years, if I write it off, that essentially cost me about $200 per year. And that's something that I'm willing to take. 
The third thing here is that the laptop speakers are not amazing. When you compare that with the latest 2019 16 inch model, the audio performance out of those two laptops are quite significant. Now, again, I'm not a huge gamer. I don't even game on a laptop as much. Usually I'm just on Xbox. So the speaker performance doesn't really bother me that much. So in conclusion, I would say understand your own needs. You don't need to run out there and buy the latest and greatest right away. Buy the technology that satisfies your need. You don't have to buy the latest and greatest out there anytime it's being released because those are well-known money pits. Now is a great time to buy pre-loved tech gadgets today. Some of the best deals are in technologies that were released three to four years ago. Technology hasn't changed that much in the last three to four years. Mostly, there are just incremental upgrades on top of each other. So if you're trying to save a little bit of cash and trying to still get in on a more modern gadget, then now is a good time to look at gadgets from three to four years ago.